do you think like where you are right now, the fact that Drake mentioned you in a song that ended up getting that big, like did that kind of change people's perception of you? Yeah, yeah. So like every now everybody kind of like take me serious now. You know, you gotta understand like a lot of people know me, a lot of people know my street reputation. So they, just, they they whole thought process of me is Ab don't really rap. He just some some crazy gangster motherfucker who just you know what I'm saying? Who just out here running around with guns and acting crazy and talking shit. And I know a lot of people be intimidated too. They don't want to be in the room with me and my niggas. You know what I'm saying? So and I understand that now. When Drake mentioned my name, it opened up a lot of ears who didn't know who I was or people who knew who I was. And then they say, you know what? Fuck it. I'm listening to his music. You know what I'm saying? And that that made my career do like a 360. And once he did that, it kind of made me say, fuck it, I'm going to take this shit serious, man. I'm really going to be, I'm really going to rap, man. And this, is, this is what I'm doing. Yeah, and I think uh, Back to Back got nominated for a Grammy. Yeah, he got nominated for a Grammy. It's not like you got nominated for a Grammy, but you're on a song, you're mentioned in a song that's nominated for a Grammy. So you're kind of like, Almost touching the Grammy yourself in a way, you know. That what I mean? shit is crazy, man. It's unbelievable, man. I, you know, I, I'm just happy and blessed, man, that the guy mentioned my name. You know what I'm saying? And it's like after that, you know, my price went up. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> my prices definitely went up with everything. I want this, that, and that now. You know what I mean? And niggas just giving it to me. So, so last time, you know, we interviewed you. We did a, an in-person interview. Then we did some stuff over the phone. Uh, you and Meek were at odds. Yeah. Right? Uh, you know, Drake mentioned you, then you did an interview with me, and then and then uh, Meek said some stuff about you, and you said some stuff back, and so forth and so forth. But since that time, you guys have, you know, patched things up. Um, I talked to him on the phone. I mean, we're, okay. from, we're from the same city, you know what I mean? Um, so you understand, you know, me and Meek, we was, we was cool before all this, all this shit happened, man. You know, some some you know some OGs in the greatest four. You know they they talk to him, put some sense in his head, and I talked to a couple OGs. And long story short, we just talked. You know what I mean? Okay. We decided so, not to. You know, I mean it caught it caught me down. Cause I you know it caught me down a lot. You know what I mean? So we talked. Okay. So so you guys got on the phone like. How long after you know we did, we did our interviews? By that time, things have kind of calmed down, and you know, I mean, there wasn't anything active happening anymore. Um, yeah, it's, you know, we we never ran into each other. You know, me and my my squad never ran into a squad. You feel what I'm saying? And you know, this fully streets are small. It got ugly. You know what I'm saying? But you know, I got in touch with me. We talk. You know what I mean? We talk like men. And that'd be, and that'd be, that'd be what would be going wrong with a lot of people's, a lot of beefs, man. Like a phone call really can, can save lives or, you know what I'm saying? It can calm a lot of beefs down because there'd be misunderstandings. Especially with two motherfuckers that was kind of, that was, that was, that was cool, that was friends, you know what I'm saying? One phone call. Could it, you mean, it could save lives. So how did the, conver- how did the conversation go when y'all talked? Oh, uh, he called me. And he was like, damn, what we went wrong at, man? And I mean, I was like, man, that was that was wrong what you did. You know what I'm saying? That was wrong. I ain't, you know, I never said, I never said nothing about you enough. You know, stay just after me, man. You, you, you wrong. You wrong. And he said, yeah, but your friend, your guys, and all that. I'm saying, all right, I didn't say nothing. You know what I'm saying? Man, you got a relationship, not you enough. He said, yeah, but your guys, man. They, you know what I mean? We just talked about this shit and. He was like, man, you know, man, you was friends, yeah, we, we, just, we can't, like, you know what I mean? I was like, yeah, we was, you know what I'm saying? Just talk. And I just said, fuck it, you know what I mean? Like, one less motherfucker, I gotta, you know what I mean? Get crazy on. So it was like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, the, the, the thing about these situations is that Y'all don't have to go back to being friends, but y'all could just agree that ain't no ain't no hostility going yeah, forward. Yeah, basically, that's basically what it is, though. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, it's like 
You really can't, you know what I mean? I'm, I, I, I don't want to be friends with people no more, I mean, you know what I mean? With nobody no more because, you know, loyalty is for sale with people. You know what I'm saying? People, people could purchase your loyalty. I don't want really to be a friend. You know what I'm saying? Because if, if you're my friend, you, you gotta be, you're free from my harm, physically and verbally and emotionally. If you're my friend, you know what I'm saying? And I want to be free from yours. You know what I'm saying? And if it ain't that, like, we could just be cordial. You know what I'm saying? We ain't got to be friends. Meek actually came yeah. back at Drake and uh, did another song. After, you know, way, way after, you know, they were going back and forth with the whole thing. What was your uh, take uh, on the Meek diss record? Um, it was all right. You know what I'm saying? Like, it was cool. I mean, I know a lot of people that did it different. You know what I'm saying? But I don't know his reasons. Maybe it was, you know, got something to do with, you know what I mean? Legal reasons why you ain't go at him sooner. Or I don't know. But I would have, you know what I mean? I would have been did it. And the song was, the song was hard. You know what I'm saying? So what do you think about it? <laughs> well, I think had it dropped right away, I think it would have made a kind of an impact. You know, but the fact that it dropped so much later that it yeah. was so much time had passed between it that it, it didn't it didn't make a, a big splash. Yeah. yeah. It was all right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you should you gotta like I just don't understand, like I don't really understand what like I know him, you know what I'm saying? I don't understand what happened. Why he just go right at it, you know what I'm saying? He's, yeah, I mean so, sometimes you don't always have the best advice around you. Yeah. I, 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 I'm going to say it like that. If you look at the people who are really successful and stay successful, you could take a look at their teams and say, okay, yeah. like, th there, there's, there's a lot of, you know, a lot of brain power going on in yeah. this project. Just yeah. because this person may be the front person, like yeah. he's taking, he's got people yeah. on his squad that know what the fuck they're really doing. And you yeah. know what I'm saying? A ain't scared to tell them yeah. when, when they fucking up. I mean, I, I know, I know my success is based on people around me. I, I can't say I'm here by myself. Yeah, exactly. That's yeah. how, that's kind of like, that's how my team is. It's not, it's not a dictatorship. It's like, I got, I got blood brothers who call a lot of the shots and my, 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 my homie, Paul Rilla, my manager. He caused a lot of the shots. We all we all a collective team. I know it's the AR Ab show, but AR Ab just the name. It's four or five people behind AR Ab. You know what I'm saying? It's four or five people under that name. You know what I'm saying? So AR Ab just the name and the brand, but it's four or five people pushing this brand. Like it, now, like, like like it's their name. So that's how we do it. Definitely. Now now in the in the same song, Meek Mill uh dissed fifty cent. And I was like, you know, my hands was rubbing together like, okay, this is going to be some real yeah. rap, rap battle type beef shit like that 50's known for. And 50 just came back with a bunch of memes and then kind of left it alone. Yeah. Uh, I was a little disappointed. Like, I was waiting to hear some 50 diss records and I, yeah. I never heard them. Yeah. So how, how, like, what was your take on that? Uh, I don't know, man. Like, I, I guess me feel like, man, he got to get all this shit off his chest. People was taking shots and... You know, he he felt like he had to go at him, but with Fifty Cent and all the meme, you know Fifty Cent. You know he kind of he entertaining man. He's a character man. He entertain entertainer, so he gonna make people laugh and all that stuff. So I expected him to do all that. I expected a diss track too, but I expected Fifty Cent to do exactly what he did, and it was yeah. funny. Was it funny? I laughed my ass off. It was funny, but but I think that like. And, and fifty and fifty uh, has said this before in his interviews, is that he don't feel like he's above the art form, and Ooh. ultimately, no matter what fifty does, yeah. it's really based on him being a rapper. Yeah, and like someone called him out on a rap song. Yeah, I expected him to come back yeah. with a rap song. As I don't know, man. Memes. You know, fifty. You know, you're a little older. He ain't really been in the rap scene crazy. Lately, you know, I guess he probably he probably felt like Meek was a young buck. You know what I'm saying? A young horse. He got his shit all together ready. He ain't really want to, you know. 
Sometimes when you you old and you're on a level of where though you got your shit, you can't give a young fighter a chance to knock you off the, you know what I mean, take the belt from you. You know, you're a 45 year old boxer, sometimes you ain't gonna get a, a, a 21 fresh knockout artist a chance to, to take your legacy down or take the belt from you. Yep. I feel you, man. I, I feel you. I mean, at this point, it seemed like a dead issue anyway, so neither yeah, one man. Of them really spoke about it. You got it, man. One there. One on my back there. You see it? Okay. One there, one under there, a few. Oh, so you got stabbed all over your body? Yeah. There ain't no lose or gain from that, you know what I mean? So, I don't see no reason to lie. Yeah. Punch, punch a little Quentin in his mouth. He seemed like a nice guy, man. <laughs>